Okay, well, hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Marcos. Uh, I've been in the uh, so I've been in the financial service industry for uh, just over just over ten years. Um, started off in the life and insurance industry. Um, so the way the uh, insurance industry is really broken down is you have your life and health, and then you also have your property and casualty. Um, and we'll go into those two um, departments, I guess, of the insurance industry as a whole. Uh, so today we're just going to talk about fine tech, uh, the state of fine tech and the state of the insurance industry, and uh, how it's ripe for disruption. Um, really, the, industry, the insurance industry hasn't really changed as far as the uh, structure of uh, the, the um, since like 1851, it's pretty much been the same. It's you have companies that insure other individuals uh, for liability, um, and, and then you have the insurers who purchase this insurance in case something were to happen. Uh, that's when the insurance kicks in uh, with those funds, and that's really what this is. Um, so let's go ahead and just go into how the insurance is regulated here in the United States. Uh, so the McCarran-Ferguson Act. Um, so what, what this act does is it basically tells Congress that uh, you're not responsible and you're not basically um, um, authorized to regulate the insurance industry. Um, that authorization is passed on to the states. So um, briefly go the acts of Congress that do not expressly pur purport to regulate the business of insurance will not preempt state laws and or regulations that regulate the business of insurance. Um, basically that the state law is the law of the land regarding insurance. Uh, the Act also provides the federal antitrust laws um, that will not apply to the business of insurance as long as the state regulates that area. So as long as the states are on top of their uh, insurance laws, uh, the federal it's uh, the federal law is going to kind of stay back and stay away. Okay, so that's this this Act really what separates um, federal regulation from state regulation. Um, so now state regulation is really um, regulated by the insurance commissioner. So there's 50 states, all 50 states have an insurance commissioner and that's what this is. This is the National Association of Insurance Commissioners and, and what this uh, commission does basically is all the 50 insurance commissioners gather um, you know, um, uh, during the year and they basically come up with the uh, general law of the land. So they come up with uh, you know, something that's very general for all 50 states that they must follow and then from there the states uh, the individual states are really responsible for the additions uh, to some of these laws. Um, so the NAC model acts and regulations provide some degree of uniformity between states. But these models do not have the force of law and have no effect unless they are adopted by a state. Uh, they are, however, used as guides by most states and most states adopt them with little or no change. Um, so some of the most regulated states uh, insurance laws are uh, California and New York. And that's why you have an insurance license in California. Um, you can pretty much just take that across all 50 states and you'll be fine. Uh, same thing goes with New York. Uh, normally when you get your insurance license, like in the you know, state of Arizona, maybe the state of Nevada, and you also want to sell insurance in California, uh, you actually got to go and take the exam again for the California uh, to make sure you understand California law. Uh, so there's an additional test you got to take and get your license in California. Um, it's sort of, uh, I, I would say it's very similar to like a CPA license for accountants or maybe a, uh, um, the attorney license for um, attorneys. Okay, so when they take the bar exam, they can take it in New York and usually that translates to other states. Uh, but if you take it like in Texas, for example, then you might have to retake it again in California. So just to give you guys an idea of, um, of the regulation here. Uh, so briefly, we'll go over through some types of insurance. Uh, the, the most common, and probably the most popular ones that uh, you, you might be familiar with is, you know, property insurance. Um, another one here is uh, flood insurance, homeowners insurance, uh, and then we have on the in the middle column here we have po uh, personal auto insurance. And, and really, what the insurance is, you just pass it on your risk. So instead of saying, you know what, I'm going to be fully responsible for um, my $20,000 car, I'm going to pass along that risk to an insurance company who's going to carry that risk for me. And in return, I'm going to pay these insurance premiums. So I'm going to pay $2,000 a year just in case something were to happen to my $20,000 car. Um, that insurance can um, cover me for that liability. And that's really what it is. You're transferring risk, uh, right? In the insurance world, you can take on that risk 
and that pretty much means you're self-funded. Or you can transfer the risk, and that's what insurance really is, is you're transferring risk. Um, as you can see, we'll, we'll kind of stay on here. Uh, there's earthquake insurance, there's workers' compensation insurance, uh, aircraft has its own type of insurance, uh, surety, um, that's like a, a tax preparer, for example, has a surety bond, and that's in case he does anything negligent uh, regarding your tax return and you were to sue him, uh, then that insurance kicks in uh, for that neglig uh, negligence. Um, burglary and theft, um, so a lot of this insurance, uh, these are actually uh, insurance lines. Um, it's sometimes they're combined with other insurance, uh, so like burglary and theft can be combined with a um, the where is this on the on the left hand side you see commercial multiple peril, so that can be combined with a burglary and theft, and that will cover maybe one one business, one standalone business. Um, product liability, um, you know, when you purchase your high or that's product liability insurance. Um, credit. Uh, so when you get a credit card from like a institution and you borrow five thousand um, dollars, maybe American Express says, you know what? I don't think that creditor is going to pay me. Well, I don't think that um, that that borrow is going to pay me the full five thousand dollars that we loaned him. So there might be a, a default of maybe fifty percent there. Uh, so these uh, institutions, these creditors, uh, purchase credit insurance, and that's what that is: credit default. And uh, you see it on the right-hand side. Um, so, so these are the different types of insurance. Um, brief, I'm going to stay on this page and, and go over the the way the insurance industry is broken down. I don't have a slide for this, and I apologize. Uh, but uh, normally at the very top, you have the uh, uh, insurance companies. So think of a State Farm, for example, OK? And, um, and then from State Farm, you have uh, brokers. Okay, and, and a broker is really someone that has licenses or has been um, has been has has tons of experience and has done tons of business uh, with State Farm, for example, with other companies, and they talk, they take on a little bit more uh, responsibility and liability. Um, so really, there is um, so you have brokers at the you know second level there, and then underneath them you have the agents. So an insurance agent would be very last. And that's normally what you find when you purchase insurance. Uh, you purchase it through an agent, uh, normally not a broker. Um, so this is the reason that uh, the disrupting the insurance industry is ripe, and it's a perfect time for this now. Um, as you can see, in 2014, um, over $556 million was poured into um, insurance fine tech companies. Um, and, and just in 2015, so just in you know the eight months, um, it's close to double that now, so it's about uh, it's $831 million has been poured into insurance type uh, fine tech companies. So these are companies, um, let's see what's a good one, Metro Mile for example, uh, that's a good company that, um, you know, it's it's startup, it's trying to disrupt the insurance industry. Um, there's a few other ones we'll, I've listed here and we'll, we'll kind of go through those in the uh, next slide. Um, so this is the market potential for us. Okay, so the U.S. insurance industry, a net premiums written, uh, total $1 trillion. Uh, so let me kind of explain what the net premium written amount is, okay? So when you purchase insurance, let's just say car insurance, for example, and let's say that the annual premium for that car insurance, the cost to insure your automobile is $1,000, okay? Now, you purchase $1,000. But let's say uh, um, uh, someone who also has insurance through uh, State Farm. So let's say you purchase insurance through State Farm, and now we have client B, and client B also purchased their insurance through State Farm. Okay, they're also paying a thousand dollars, but client B just got in an accident. Okay, so the company received maybe five thousand dollars in premium from that client B, but had to repair the, the client B's automobile. Um, for, for car damage, and that repair was $6,000, for example. So the net effect of that is that um, the client, the actually, the State Farm lost $1,000 on client B, okay? They actually lost $1,000, right? Because they only received $5,000 in insurance premiums, but they actually paid out $6,000 in damages, okay? 
So that's a negative 1,000, right? And now they're accepting my 1,000. So that's a net zero uh, for that company, just for client A and client B. Okay, so when you think of net premiums, think of those two, uh, think of that one scenario, okay? There's, there's thousands and thousands of individuals purchasing insurance, um, and there's thousands of dollars that the insurance company is responsible for and uh, paying back in damages. Okay, so that's really what this is, and that's why it's a written total of $1 trillion, uh, which is a tremendous amount if you think about it, right? Because they had to receive more than a trillion dollars, and they had to pay back maybe more than a trillion dollars, just to get to a trillion dollars. So a trillion dollars was written. That's net premium, okay? Um, so as I said here, the two uh, big departments in the insurance world is life and health insurance, and also property and casualty insurance, okay? So... Of the total net premiums, 46% was property and casualty, okay? And 54% of the one trillion was life and health insurers. Huge amount here. Uh, so let's go, let's kind of dig deeper, okay? Um, of that net premium, um, property and casualty consists of primarily of auto insurance, home insurance, and commercial insurance. And commercial insurance is really like your small businesses, and think of those big buildings in like in a downtown area, okay? Uh, and then life insurance, it consists of primarily of annuities, uh, which is more of an investment, um, and life insurance, okay? So we're talking about in billions. So as you can see in blue, uh, it's $644 billion was written in 2014 in net premiums uh, under life and health. And uh, $502 billion was written in property and casualty. Okay. Um, I don't have a slide on um, how this translates to compensation, uh, but think of the total net premium written and, and, and give it a 10%. Okay, so think of a 10% payout as a uh, compensation for the insurance industry. So whether the broker's taking 10% and then giving his insurance agent maybe 7% um, or 80% of that 10%, um, but normally it's around 10% is what the average commission is on, on these net premiums written. So I'm going to give you an example. So if I, if I write um, $1,000 uh, of insurance premium, my commission on that $1,000 is 10%. Okay, which is $100. Um, so now one example is $100. So that's how much I'm earning uh, just to sell that piece of insurance. Okay, so now multiply that uh, for a trillion just to get an idea. Um, so these are the top players. Okay, uh, these individuals have written the most uh, uh, insurance in the year 2014. Uh, so you can see State Farm is at the very top. Uh, just in the year 2014, they written um, or they wrote 58 uh, 58 billion dollars worth of insurance. Okay, so uh, these are individuals in the United States that went to State Farm and said, you know what, I want to purchase auto insurance from you. Here's my thousand dollars. I want to purchase home insurance from you. Here's my thousand dollars. I want to purchase commercial insurance from you. Here's my thousand dollars. Okay, and they own 10 percent of the market. Uh, Liberty Mutual, uh, Allstate, uh, Berkshire Hathaway, they actually own Geico. Um, so um, Berkshire Hathaway actually started off as a as an insurance company. That's really what uh, Warren Buffett is really known for. Is uh, He's been in the insurance industry ever since uh, he started Berkshire Hathaway. Um, and actually Brook, uh, Berkshire Hathaway was a textile company they purchased, and then uh, he just um, changed all the insurance uh, companies under that name. So he, he kept that name. Uh, but that's really what this is. He runs an insurance um, uh, conglomerate. Uh, they have Travelers Insurance, uh, Progressive Insurance, uh, Nationwide, um, AIG. Uh, so maybe you guys heard of AIG in 2010. Uh, they're sort of, you know, big part of the, uh, they were responsible for the huge job meltdown uh, with credit default swaps and, and uh, some other things had to do with insurance. Uh, so that's AIG, it's American International Group. And they have Farmers Insurance. Okay, and then USAA Insurance Group. And USAA Insurance Group primarily sells to veterans. Uh, so they sell to all of our military, okay? 
Uh, that's what they're known for. And then this, we have a breakdown of the market share there. And uh, for life and uh, life insurance and annuities, uh, it's a whole different ball of wax. That's why you see different companies. Um, so you can see MetLife is actually responsible. That's they own 16% of the market, and they wrote just last year alone uh, 95 billion dollars. Okay, uh, you have Prudential, uh, New York Life, uh, Jackson National Life, um, Agon, Lincoln National. AIG again, uh, Principal, uh, Manu Life, and then Massachusetts, uh, that's Mass Mutual. Uh, so Massachusetts Mutual Life Insurance is Mass Mutual. And this is the breakdown of their market share. Uh, currently, some of the big competition right now is uh, Policy Genius, um, Sure. So these two companies are really big here in the United States. Uh, insurance agents, not really. Um, so these two companies here are really brokers, so they're really trying to do what we're trying to do is uh, they are the um, brokers where clients go and purchase insurance through. Agents, insurance agents work for brokers and brokers sign directly uh, with the insurance companies. Okay, um, And that's really what these two companies are. Uh, KNIP is actually a company in uh, Switzerland and, um, and, and they, they actually, I think they, they also try to become uh, the, the, on the movement of becoming a broker. And then uh, these are just apps, just to kind of maintain all your insurance policies in one. Um, bought by Many actually is pretty unique. Uh, bought by Many is a, um, is a uh, crowdsourcing insurance uh, company. So what they're trying to do is, is uh, crowdsource uh, different funds uh, to purchase or to cover people. So transfer the risk to this pool that you're a part of. Um, so that's what they're trying to do is recreate the insurance, um, the way the insurance uh, industry works uh, with crowdsourcing. Um, and, that's, and that's not here in the United States because there's certain laws. You can't crowdsource here in the United States yet. Uh, so that's something that did spread for disruption too. Um, and that's, that's, that was pretty much my presentation. It's a very high level presentation regarding uh, the, the insurance uh, world and, and sort of what's going on.